So, part six from the 1997 Higher Maths paper. Moving on to paper two. So, first of all, try question one. Paper two, number one, first part of it. There's a line and there's a circle and it says find the points of intersection of the line and the circle. As soon as it says the word intersection, you're going to substitute the equations. So it'll be substitute equation one into equation two. Now I'm going to rattle through this bit, so I'll just outline it before I zoom through it. Substituting means using this equation, every time you see y, you're going to replace it with 2x plus 1. That will give you an equation just with x's in it, highest power x squared. Multiply out the brackets, gather it up to a quadratic, factorise it, get the two values of x out, find the values of y, and there's your two points. So, off we go. So, it's an intersection, which means I'm going to substitute 1 into, right, so off we go then. So it's x squared plus, instead of y, write 2x plus 1, and then the next time write y, 2x plus 1, and finish that off. Now, multiply this bracket here, so square the first, twice the product, and square the last, and then just multiply that one out properly. And then, next part, gather them up, there's 5x squared, that's 10 for the x's, and I don't know, minus 15, so that equals 0. Now, take out the common factor of 5, and that'll leave a nice little quadratic to factorise, it can only be... It's going to be x times x, 1 times 3, the plus goes to the larger one, so it's a minus, giving me the two answers, x equals negative 3 or x equals 1. Now, put that back in to find y, back into the first one, 2 times negative 3 plus 1, so that's going to give me a negative 5. Put that back in the first one, 2 times 1 plus 1, so that'll give me a 3. Then, a is going to be the point, check it, go right, 1, yes, it's the second one, so that's a positive 1, 3, and b is going to be the one, negative 3, negative 5. And so, part b. Part 1. Write down the coordinates of C, the centre of the circle. Well, that's easy. There it's there. Negative 5, 1. C is the point. Negative 5, 1. Part 2. Find the equation of, find the equation of a line. Y minus B equals M X minus A. <coughs> Unless, of course, it was really obvious and I knew where to cut the Y axis and I could just use Y equals M X plus C. And so I need its gradient and a point on it. Well, it goes through the centre, there's the point on it, but I knew A and B anyway, and if this line cuts AB, which is a chord at right angles, it must go through the middle of the chord, so I could have used the midpoint of AB. Well, I've got C, so that's just as good. Gradient, well, it's perpendicular to line 1. So the gradient of line 1 is 2, which means the gradient of line 2 is going to be negative a half. They have to multiply to give negative 1. So I can put those two things into this. So I've got y minus 1 is negative a half times x, take away negative, plus 5. 2y minus 2 is negative x minus 5. <coughs> and then you decide what's the best way to write that. Well, with a multiple of y, I'm not going to write y equals because I'm not particularly fond of fractions. So to avoid those negatives, I suppose just take it all to this side. x plus 2y plus 3 equals 0 would do for this because I'm not going to do anything else with that line afterwards. I don't require it for a substitution. So there's the rest of question 1. Right, here's question 2. All the information is at the top there. Question 2. Now this time we've got these three points on the line, these three collinear points. I need to find the point R, not the point Q. It's the point R. Using the section formula, this is an external division of the line PQ. PR is four thirds of PQ. So that means for the normal division, how many, then how many more for the ratio, it's actually four to get to R. This bit's three, and then one to get back. So that'd be a minus one. So the ratio is four to negative one. Four steps forward, one step back. And then you can put down the normal formula for that. So r would be 1 over the sum of these, 4 plus negative 1, that'll be a third of, same as before, it'll be the 4 times the q and the negative 1 times the p. So it's negative 1 times p plus 4 times the q. That would be the section formula for this external division of the line pq.
and then it's just putting all the figures. So off we go. Right, so it'll be the, the negative of P, putting P in there, and four times Q, putting in Q. Right, and then when it comes to doing this, you can just do that all in one go. So what have you got? You've got 1 and 20 is 21. You've got negative 3 and nothing's negative 3. You've got negative 2 and 20 is 18. And then divide them all by 3. That goes 7, negative 1, and that'll go 6. Making R the point 7, negative 1, 6. However, if you didn't like that, you could just do it from first principles by saying, how do you get to this unknown point R? So it's the same in vectors. If there's somewhere you want to go, then follow a route that you know instead. I know how to get to P, so I could start from P, and I know the move that takes me from P to R, because it's four, times, three, four thirds of the move from P to Q. So I could say I could get start at P and go from P to R. Go four thirds of PQ. And then just work out PQ separately. Could run it all down together, but I'll work it out to the side, I'll work it out over here. So PQ, what's the move that takes me from P to Q? You can just you can see from the number there's how many along, how many of how many of that way. I'll set it out formally. Q minus P. Five O oh, five take away negative one three two. So that's going to give me 6, negative 3, 3. Which means to get to R, I would start at P. This is its position vector. And I would add on to that 4 thirds of 6, negative 3, whoops, 3. And you could just do that in one go, those calculations. So we'd say 4 thirds divide by 3. 2, 8, take away 1. 7. Negative 1, negative 4, plus 3, negative 1. 3 into 3, 1, times 4, 4, plus 2, 6. Which means, again, R is the point 7, negative 1, 6. For part A, which I don't think I wrote down. Right, so part B. Roads from P and R are built to meet at S. Calculate the size of angle PSR, so this angle in here. Well, straight away, <coughs> as soon as we've got lines and angles, you think of the scalar product, because that's something that connects them. Now, if it's this angle, then I require the vectors that radiate from the angle. That means I want vectors SP and vector SR. And what I'm going to use is the fact that the scalar product of them equals the length of one times the length of the other times the cosine of the angle in between, thus giving you the projection of one into the direction of the other. But the scalar product can also be worked out from the components. So the components can give me the lengths, the components give me the scalar product, that only leaves the angle as the only unknown, so I should be able to find that. So, now, I'm going to race through this bit because it's fairly straightforward. I'm going to find the components of this, the components of that, set out the scalar product, and then insert all the figures. Right. Go. Go. So, that's going to be P minus S. So, what's that? Negative 1, 3, 2. Take away negative 2, 2, 5. And that'll be what? 1, 1, negative 3. Right. R minus S. That's going to be 7, negative 1, 6. Take away the same thing. Negative 2, 2, 5. That'll be 9, uh, negative 3, 1. Right, now, set out the scalar product. SP dot SR will be the length of SP times the length of SR times the cosine of the angle between angle PSR. Right, bring that over the other side. So cos PSR will be that scalar product, SP dot SR, over the two lengths, length of SP, length of SR. Now, you don't need to work it out to the side. You can set it all out here. So scalar product, 1 times 9, 1 times negative 3, negative 3 times 1. All over the square root, length of the three dimensions, 1 squared plus 1 squared plus negative 3 squared. Square root of this, 9 squared, negative 3 squared, and 1 squared. Right, so what does that come to? Top part, you've got 9, take away 3, take away 3, that'll be 3. Underneath, square root of 1, 1 and 9, that'll be 11. Square root of 81 and 10, that's 91. P, S, R is going to be the inverse cos of 3 over 
the square root of 11 times 91, which equals, when you put it into your calculator, 84.6 degrees. And finally, this button pressing recurrence relation number three. So question three then, a recurrence relation question, but the worst type of recurrence relation question is not one that asks for limits or finding limits or using limits to find initial values and so on. It's one that just wants you to plod on until you reach a certain amount over and over again. The first part of it, well, how does it say? It starts off with a thousand at the beginning of the month. At the end of the month, you add on half a percent. Well, that'll be the same as multiplying by 1.005. And then at the beginning of the next month, you add on 100. And it says you start off with a thousand pounds on the 1st of January. So I'll take a note of that, I'll just say one, one, a thousand pounds. Put the pounds in. And you have to figure out how much it's going to be for four marks on June the 30th. Well, it's just a case of plodding through. Because what you're going to do each time is going to be, you're going to take the amount, add on 5% by multiplying by 1.005, then add on 100, and I'll give you the amount at the beginning of the following month. Now you can do that simply by putting 1000 and pressing equals. That stores it in the answer memory, the memory called answer for your answer button in the calculator so that I just need to then do, with that sitting there, times, and it'll say answer times, 1.005 and then plus 100. Then every time you press equals, it'll give you the next answer. Now you could just rattle through them, just counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until you've got to the date you wanted. But I'm going to set it all out, but I'll speed it up. So the first answer there is 1105. So for February, we've got that 1105. Right, for the rest of them, so March, then April, then May, getting there, now June, but also July. Right, going up to the 1st of July. It asked for the 30th of June, but that's because the way that this has been set up, it's been set up to work out after the 100's been added. So I can go back to the 30th of June then. So on the 30th of June, the amount should have equaled that 163793 take away the 100 that was added on the 1st of July, which makes the amount 1, oops, 1537.93. Right, now that was part A. Just double check that. That was part A. How much was on the account on the 30th of June? That amount. B. On what date does the sum they have first exceed 2000? Well, let's just continue plodding on. So, I'll speed through it. So, for August, it's not enough. September, still not enough. October, not enough. November, that's it. Right. So, on the 1st of November, it went to 2073. That means the previous, the previous day, when the percentage was added, it would have been under because £100 was added there. So it didn't exceed 2000 until the 1st of November. So the answer to that would be the 1st of November. On the 1st of November, it exceeded £2,000. And the last part, C, is actually what we did right at the very beginning. What's the recurrence relation? That's what we just did over and over again. We should have asked for that first of all. The current relation would be, we'll just use A since it's amounts of money. A n plus 1 was 1.005 A n plus 100. Starting with an initial value of 1000 and trying to specify what that actually means. And where A n is the amount, it's the amount on the first of the month, maybe even qualify it further, after the £100 is added. Yeah, just to be a line for that one. And that's question three, plodded through.